All right, so today um, you're going to be doing an Ed Puzzle on something called orbital diagrams. Now, orbital diagram is a visual representation of the way electrons are arranged around an atom. It is what you did last week when we did the uh, Hogg Hotel exercise. What you were doing, again, without using all the terminology, was drawing orbital diagrams, especially on those last couple slides where I asked you to just draw arrows. That's what an orbital diagram is. It's a series of boxes representing what are called atomic orbitals. Those are the areas in space where, um, where electrons exist. And drawing arrows inside those orbitals to show how many electrons there are in an orbital and what's called the spin of those electrons. Now in the video you're gonna watch, uh, the teacher who, who did this, it wasn't my video, um, goes into a lot of detail about the rules and why electrons do the things they do. He talks about things called quantum numbers. Uh, and we'll touch briefly on a lot of this stuff. The rules will definitely go over. Um, and as you'll see, like I described last week, the rules uh, use a lot of weird terminology. Okay, Aufbau sequence, Pauli exclusion principle, Hun's rule, all this stuff. Some are names of people, some are words from other languages. Um, but at the bottom, Right. At the, the core of these rules are the exact same rules we used for the hogs. Hogs are lazy. That's rule number one. In electron configuration, rule number one says electrons will always occupy the lowest possible state. Electrons are lazy, if you want to say that. Uh, rule number two, which was the, the hogs don't like each other, so they say go into their own rooms. Electrons are the same way. They are all the same charge, which means they push off against each other. And so in order to minimize that repulsion, it's called, um, they will always go into an empty orbital if there's one available, uh, as long as it doesn't violate rule number one. And then the last rule says that in the event that they do have to share, then they must have what's called opposite spin. Uh, and it has to do with this thing called quantum numbers, which are kind of the address of the electron and no two electrons can have the same address. So they can be in the same level, in the same orbital, but by giving them what's called opposite spin, which is what we show with the up and down arrows, that changes one of the quantum numbers. And again, some of this is, is a little deeper than we need to, to really go, um, but it'll be discussed and it kind of gives you the background for the rules. But the big picture here is, I want you to come out of this, hopefully, being able to draw an orbital diagram for um, you know, probably the first 30 or 40 elements on the periodic table. So let's take an example. All right, if we have the element calcium, that's element number 20. So that means that it has 20 protons, that's what makes it atomic number 20, and in a neutral atom, which, you know, until further notice, you can assume these are neutral atoms, has 20 electrons. So we need to draw a diagram that shows 20 electrons. So going back to last week, this is check 20 hogs into the hotel. Now the structure of the electron orbitals and even the letters and numbers that we use for electron orbitals are the same ones we used for the hotel. And you know, that's on purpose, right? So that when you see a diagram that looks like this, uh, okay? And it's labeled 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, and 4s. Hopefully that's not cut off. Um, okay, every time you see the letter s, it has one room, right? We said one room, but that also is equal to one orbital. Okay, an orbital is just the name we give the area of space where uh, electrons exist. So they exist in these sort of predefined little areas. And we can talk more about it's really not that um, sort of cut and dry. But for our purposes, an orbital represents an area of space where there are electrons. Every time you see the letter S, it has one orbital. Every time you see the letter P, it has three orbitals. Each orbital can hold two electrons, so you can have six and a P, two and an S. If we got up to the D orbitals, um, I think that might get cut off. Um, 
d orbitals have uh, d sublevels, I should say. D levels have five orbitals, which is how you can put ten electrons in there. Now, in order to fill in the twenty electrons that we need, we need to put in the arrows until we get to twenty. So we always start at the bottom. That's the Hogs or Lazy rule, which is also known as the Aufbau principle. One electron there. The next electron can either go up or share. When you have to choose between those two, you share first. Then the next electron goes up, down, up to the next level. Here we have three rooms, so the first three electrons each go into their own room. And if that was all we needed, we could stop there. But we don't. We're only up to seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep going. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19 and 20. Okay, so there's 20 electrons for calcium. We built from the bottom up and we spread them out when we could, but we didn't have a choice. Actually, every single one of these orbitals that I drew ended up being full. Um, so we didn't violate any of the rules because we didn't have anywhere else to go other than up to higher levels, which we don't do unless we absolutely have to. Okay, so that's that's for um, for calcium and just a couple of quick things, like let's say we didn't need this, let's say we only were doing, um, instead of 20, we were doing 17 electrons. So this would be 2, 4, 6 gives me 10, 12, this is uh, 18. So if I take out one of these, that would be 17, okay? Now that last orbital is not full, and that's okay because it doesn't need to be, we only had 17 electrons. This arrow here could be up or down, doesn't really matter. Um, the only thing is if we had 16 electrons, let's say, instead of 17 we have 16, this would not be correct, okay? And this violates the second rule. The second rule says electrons won't share unless they have no other choice but to go up. Well this electron here could be here. Okay, so if there's an empty orbital on that same level, don't double up. Okay, spread them out until you have no other choice but to move up and then double up. When you're all doubled up, then you have to move up. You don't have a choice. Okay, so the only other thing that, um, uh, there's actually kind of two things that, that they'll mention in the video. One is that um, this teacher refers to things that happened last week. Um, obviously, it's not me. so. Uh, the things that he did last week are not the same as the things we did last week. Plus, it's, you know, who knows? I don't remember how long ago this video was made. But um, anyway, he's going to refer back to things that were happening last week, which are different from what we did. So just don't get thrown off by that. Uh, I'm not, I, it's not that you didn't get it or didn't, uh, you know, that you missed something. It's just he did this lesson in a slightly different order than the way I'm doing it. The only other thing that you'll see is when he does the diagrams, and this is, this is something you'll come across too. Instead of going vertically, they go horizontally like this, all right, 2P. It's all the same. It's just instead of bottom to top, you go left to right. Um, and you would fill them in that way. And then you'd carry on from there if you needed to. All right, so um, you have the choice. You, you need to do the Ed Puzzle for Wednesday. It's the first assignment of term three. So again, if you... Um, if you're finished with all your work for term two, start the Ed Puzzle. If you need to do makeup work, put the Ed Puzzle off for now uh, and do that makeup work because you got to get that work in first. And this, this doesn't count for term two. So prioritize appropriately, use the time as best you can. Uh, and again, just a reminder, uh, in this case, this is Tuesday PSAT day. Um, there is no afternoon session. Uh, it's just time for you to get caught up and or uh, work on this Ed Puzzle. All right, so we'll see you all online Wednesday.